This video picks up with the cone structure and adds value to it. Again, the process remains the same as all the other structures that we've done so far. Basically, you poster by differentiating the shadow side from the light side, um, and you draw right over the edge of the form. You still faintly see the form itself. Um, so it makes distinctions very easy and makes the process very simple in that step. Next, you go through the shadow core, which is uh, the deep part of the shadow uh, at the transition from light to dark. You'll notice that light bounces back and creates a sense of reflected light on the dark side of the object. You then differentiate the cast shadow. And by differentiate, I mean just create a distinct value difference from the form itself to the cast shadow and from the form and from the shadow side to the shadow core. Next, what I'm doing here is grounding out the object. So what I've done is created a, an anchor in the value range and at the same time made the object feel like it's sitting on the ground. So by finding my absolute darkest value where no light gets to, I have done several things at once. Next, what I'm working on is evening out the transitions from the shadow core into the uh, shadow side and reflected light part of the cone. Because it's a uh, rounded figure, I, uh, I have to continuously change the transition from one part of the shadow to the next part of the shadow to, to the next. And that's because when you shift the plane, the value has to shift. So if I have a continuous shift in plane, I need to have a continuous shift in value. And then um, I do that on the light side as well to kind of create the sense that it's rounded and that there's a background. And by going into the background a little bit, I'm able to create a sense of how dark this cone actually is. So when you're drawing an object on white paper, it's going to look like dark marks on white paper for a long time. So the end goal in a drawing is to create the illusion that something's sitting within a space, um, at least of a realistic drawing. And so to do that, you have to have the indication of space. And this can be done very simply with the edge of a table and the background behind it. Um, so as this gets more and more developed, you'll see the cone begin to, to sit in an actual space. So one of the things that I've, that I've realized is that the highlight on the cone is brighter than the table itself. So you'll notice that I have to get some kind of tone on the table, even though there is light in the table. And then as I push the background darker and darker in each progressive layer, the cone itself starts to create the sense that it has light falling onto it. One of the measures of success in realistic drawing is A, edge control, and B, a palpable sense of light.